Hello everybody, uh, in this video we're going to be talking about one of the most confusing and misunderstood questions on the political compass test and we're going to be talking about what topic it's trying to get at and then learn about that topic basically. So for those of you who somehow uh, don't know, this is the political compass. There are two axes, authoritarian, libertarian, economic left, economic right, and you answer a series of questions and it plots you somewhere on these two axes into one of the four quadrants. Now, regardless of the merit of the political compass test or its ability to accurately identify and map political ideologies and political theory, the questions that exist on the test can still be looked at, you know, in their own merit. The answers to those questions can still give indications as to what somebody may believe. And you can learn a bunch from those questions in regards to what topics they're asking you about and how you, you know, position yourself in regards to that topic. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing in this video. So the question in question uh, is this one right here. Controlling inflation is more important than controlling unemployment. So initially, this may be a very, very confusing question. And part of this is because it's worded relatively poorly, even when I know what it's referring to. But a lot of thoughts that someone might have is, okay, well, both of these two things are bad. Why do I have to decide which one is more important to control? I would like to control both. What sort of political ideas or ideologies could you get from my answer to this question? This seems like a very strange question. And yep, I absolutely understand why a lot of people may think that way. I did as well for a very, very long time until I ran into some information and I made the connection to this question. And I now think I know what it's trying to get at. And what I think it's trying to get at is exchange rates. So what are exchange rates? Well, exchange rates is the value and purchasing power between different currencies. So for example, right now, as of the making of this video, one euro has roughly the same purchasing power as 10.22 Swedish crowns. The euro has a high exchange rate because you need less units of euros in order to get the same purchasing power that you need for more units of another currency. In this case, the Swedish crown. You need roughly 10 times as many Swedish crowns to get an equal purchasing power to the euro. The euro, high exchange rate, relatively. The Swedish crown, low exchange rate. And there are a whole range of different factors that each affect the exchange rate, uh, some of which I have lift, lift, listed here. Um, and we can go through them pretty briefly. Inflation is something that is, a lot of these are both affected by the exchange rate and affect the exchange rate themselves in a sort of mutual relationship there. Inflation is one of them. Uh, when there is high inflation, your currency will decrease in value and therefore the exchange rate will go down. You will have a lower relative exchange rate. Interest rates, by increasing your interest rates, uh, you will increase your exchange rate. Um, with speculation, if your currency see is deemed as like a, a safe, good, long-term investment, more of it will be bought up and this will increase your exchange rate. Changes in competitiveness is, again, affected by the exchange rate and affects the exchange rate itself. Uh, if a country's, you know, products become more competitive, become, you know, more better to buy, become cheaper, more people will buy from it and therefore will engage with their currency. Uh, the relative strength of other currencies, this is kind of what makes an exchange rate, right? Because there is no objective line for this is a high exchange rate, this is a low exchange rate. It's all relative to the value of the other exchange rates, right? So this also has a you know part to play in whether or not an exchange rate is considered high or low. Balance of payments, the amount of money going in and going out to the country. If there is a deficit in the balance of payments, more money is going out, you will have a lower exchange rate. There will be a downward pressure on the exchange rate. If you have a surplus in terms of your uh, balance of payments, more money is coming in than is going out, you will have an upward pressure on the exchange rate. The exchange rate will go up. Government debt can have an effect on the exchange rate because if you owe other people money, then those people have an interest in making sure that your currency retains value so that the money you owe them you know, is worth a lot in terms of purchasing power. Uh, government intervention can affect a bunch of the things we mentioned before, and like such as speculation, for, sorry, such as interest rates, for example, and therefore will have, a, you know, an effect on the exchange rate. And then economic growth and recession 
if you know your economy grows, it becomes stronger, it becomes more powerful, the exchange rate will go up. If it recedes, your exchange rate will go down. Um, so those are some of the factors that influence it, uh, influence the exchange rate. Now we're going to be going over the advantages and the disadvantages of high and low exchange rate respectively. And here we'll understand how this has to do with the question of inflation and unemployment. So the possible advantages of a high exchange rate, the reason why it says possible is because um, it's not always guaranteed that this will be the case, but generally, according to the theory, this is the sort of direction that having these types of exchange rate will shoot you in. Um, having a high exchange rate could have a downward pressure on inflation. This means it will decrease the risk of inflation. If the value of the exchange rate is high, then the price of finished imported goods, goods you buy from another country, will be relatively low, right? Because if your currency has more value, you have more purchasing power, you can buy more imported goods for the same amount of money. Uh, so prices will be relatively lower. In addition, the price of imported raw materials and components will reduce the cost of production for firms, which could lead to lower prices for consumers. So if you need a raw material as an input product and you import it from another country, if the currency you use becomes has a higher exchange rate, you can buy more of that input product for a cheaper price, therefore reducing the cost of production, which could decrease prices. The lower price of imported goods also puts pressure on domestic producers to be competitive by keeping prices low, um, basically because it's easier for a consumer to import products instead of buying them domestically. This puts pressure on domestic companies to lower their prices even further, and this also contributes to lowering prices. So these are three examples by which having a high exchange rate lowers the overall prices for consumers, which decreases the risk of inflation taking place. Number two more imports can be bought. If the value of the exchange rate is high, then each unit of the currency will buy more foreign currencies and so more foreign goods and services. This would include both, this would include both visible imports such as technology and invisible imports such as foreign travel. So once again, if the money you use increases in value in purchasing power, you can use it to buy more things internationally from other countries because you have more purchasing power than you were able to before. So you can buy more things, your purchasing power has increased basically. And this is a good thing. Uh, a high thirdly, a high value of a currency forces domestic producers to improve their efficiency. The high exchange rate will threaten their international competitiveness, so they will be forced to lower costs and become more efficient in order to maximize, maintain competitiveness. While this might result in the laying off of workers, we'll talk about that later, there are other means of increasing efficiency that will lead, that will result in greater economic productivity for the country. So it is cheaper for a country to buy things because your currency is worth more, but because it's cheaper for you to buy things, it becomes more expensive for people to buy things from you. And because of this, other options may be cheaper and may be what more gravi people gravitate towards. And therefore, for your domestic, you know, uh, company that has a high exchange rate to be competitive, they have to lower their prices even further in order to make up for the difference in purchasing power that your high exchange rate currency um, provides and the way it affects your selling prices. And because of this, it forces, you know, the companies to become more competitive, which is a good thing because you have, you maximize the allocation of resources more efficiently. Possible disadvantages to a high exchange rate. Once again, this is sort of the flip, si flip side of the advantages. So the damage to export industries. If the value of the exchange rate is high, then export industries may find it difficult to sell their goods and services abroad because of their relatively high prices. This could lead to unemployment in these industries. So like I mentioned before, yes, cheaper for you to buy things, but more expensive to buy things from you. And therefore, domestic companies that produce things may suffer. Damage to domestic industries in general. With greater levels of imports being purchased, because imports are now relatively less expensive, domestic producers may find that the increased competition causes a fall in the demand for their goods and services. This may lead to a further increase in the level of unemployment as firms cut back. So not only do you have the damage to the export industries because you know other countries might buy less products from you, um, as a country, but it may also hurt uh, the other domestic industries as well, because if you're a consumer within a country with a high exchange rate, your currency is now worth more on the global market. So 
you may be more inclined towards purchasing a product that is imported from another country because the relative prices are lower and you have an advantage there in comparison to buying things domestically because there your advantage in terms of purchasing power doesn't exist anymore, right? Because you're all using the same currency. So now you may kind of see, you know, where the unemployment and inflation comes into it, but we'll run through it all before giving the, the final summary here. Possible advantages of a low exchange rate. So the flip side, greater employment in export industries. If the value of the exchange rate is low, then exports from the country will be relatively less expensive and so more competitive. This may in turn lead to more employment in export industries. So, you know, the flip side of the other one, um, if your country has a low exchange rate, buying things from your country will be relatively cheaper. So your sales will go up and this benefits domestic export industries. Greater employment in domestic industries. The low exchange rates will make imports more expensive than they were. This may encourage domestic consumers to buy domestically produced goods instead of imports. And this may also raise employment. So once again, it's not always a good thing for a domestic consumer to buy something internationally because it may be cheaper to buy it domestically. So this could also benefit domestic companies. Possible disadvantages of a low exchange rate. Inflation. A low value of the currency will make imported final goods and services, imported raw materials, and imported components more expensive, so prices will go up. The raw materials and components are needed by firms and are costs of production that will rise, possibly leading to higher prices in the economy. The final goods and services will have higher prices, thus there is a serious likelihood of inflation. Basically, these are three ways in which general prices within your country will go up, and because of this, the risk of inflation increases. Now, beyond this disadvantage, you're also missing out on two advantages. That's why it's not listed here, because it's not so much as a, of a disadvantage as it is a missed advantage. And those are these two advantages from having a high exchange rate. So more imports can be bought, basically. So it's better for the consumers of your country because they have more of a purchasing power and can purchase more things internationally. And they pressure on domestic uh, companies to increase their efficiency because if they already have the advantage from having a lower exchange rate, they might not feel the same pressure to improve their technology, their producing process and stuff like that because they already have the advantage from the low exchange rate. Well, if a high exchange rate exists, then they will not have that leeway. So they will be more encouraged to increase their competitiveness. Now, now you may be able to see what, what this question is referring to, right? Because if you favor a high exchange rate, then you prefer that as a means by which to combat inflation. You believe inflation is more important to control in that regard. While if you favor a low exchange rate, uh, you prioritize domestic employment um, because that's a great way by well, it's a it's a way by which to uh, to measure uh, or to combat uh, unemployment domestically. So that's what the question is asking. Now I'm going to give my personal answer to the question and what I believe given the analysis and the disadvantages and advantages I provided here. So personally, I prefer having a high exchange rate to a low exchange rate. And I will get into all the reasons right now. So it's a very good way to combat inflation. A lot of other means by which you use to combat inflation have significant downsides to them. While having a high exchange rate I don't believe it has such significant downsides and the downsides that it does have can be, you know, uh, adjusted for and can be compensated for by other means, which I will also get into now. Um, furthermore, the increase in purchasing power is just a straight benefit uh, and the increase in competitiveness is also so because, you know, it puts more pressure on companies to become more competitive, to release better products. But it also could make it easier for them to become competitive because, like I mentioned before, if you have a company that needs import products, that are, sorry, input products that are imported, um, then those prices will be lower because they can buy more of it. And therefore this leads to a decrease in their cost of production, which could lead to lower prices and stuff like that, which could compensate for the negatives of, for example, having, you know, more pressure on the export industries. Now onto the disadvantage of having a high exchange rate and how I believe they can be compensated for or how much we need to compensate for them as well. So um, first of all, the effect isn't all that large to begin with. So we see that plenty of countries that have a high exchange rate still do great when it comes to employment. And this has to do with a lot of the factors that I've listed uh, that I'm going to list now, as well as other things that I haven't listed here. 
Um, so it's not really, it's not like you're going to see massive unemployment if your exchange rate is really high. That just doesn't seem to be the case. Furthermore, it's going to be, even if you lower your exchange rate, very, 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 very difficult for domestic, you know, industries to be able to uh, catch up, especially in a lot of the, you know, European and North American countries, for them to be able to catch up with other countries that sort of have, you know, the, their, their main thing is exports. It's going to be very, very, very difficult to do so, even if we do it. So then you bring on the whole host of negatives that come with that, while the positive may not necessarily be that impactful. But there is still some form of pressure on employment, and here is how we fix that. So the first step is good education that allows for flexibility in employment. By providing good education that teaches a wide range of skills, um, it's easier for a worker to shift between different fields, right? Because they have more of a broad education that can apply to all types of different fields. And therefore, if one workplace or one job no longer becomes viable, they can more easily switch to another one. Retraining programs, um, the good fundamental education is way better, but if necessary, the retraining programs could work. I've seen uh, them being implemented to varying degrees of success. But if, you know, a, a lot of people get uh, laid off in an industry, there could be some retraining programs that encourages them to go into another industry. And um, yeah, this could absolutely increase or sorry, decrease the stress of an unemployment and the amount of people unemployed. Furthermore, subsidies can be granted towards domestic industries in order to retain their competitiveness and retain their workers. Um, on top of that, having strong infrastructure for social and geographic mobility is super important. This is a good thing in itself, not necessarily in regards to unemployment, but it's also good for unemployment. So having things like good social programs that alleviate the stress, you know, in transition between two different jobs when you're unemployed is a great thing, both morally, humanitarily, and also when it comes to uh, them being able to uh, find a new living without having to make, you know, significant deteriorations to their quality of life. Uh, and the strong infrastructure can also help with geographic mobility. So it's easier to move around the country and go to places where there may be a job you're interested in or that is available. The last thing which I find is very interesting and is an excellent counter to the negative pressure on employment that having a high exchange rate brings is investing into new industries. By investing into an in industry such as, for example, green energy, an excellent idea to invest in right now, um, you are able to sort of be the forefront in the international community when it comes to producing the product and the technology that have to do with that industry, the green energy sector in this example. And because of that, you sort of form like a national monopoly on that type of industry. And therefore, the risk of other, you know, nations um, engaging in the same industry and outcompeting you becomes lower. And you can have a bunch of employment within your country um, due to that sector that you have heavily invested in. And yeah, you create, you know, a brand new industry, which is good because it produces products and services which are useful for society. In the case of green energy, um, literally avoiding, you know, uh, climate change and massive climate destruction is, is probably, you know, just, just a small benefit as well. Um, we can add that on top of the other ones. Um, and also providing, you know, employment and stuff like that to counter the negative effects of, um, of a high exchange rate. And the high exchange rate can assist in the investment in new industries because your currency is worth more. It may be easier for you to import, import input products that you may need in the development of this new industry. Um, yeah, the raw materials that you need in order to develop the technology and stuff like that. So it assists in that as well. So how I would answer this question, I would say that I agree. Controlling inflation is more important than controlling unemployment because I believe that this question has to do with exchange rates. And I believe that when it comes to finding ways by which to deal with inflation, there are relatively few, you know, all around good solutions. Um, and when it comes to, you know, changing or controlling unemployment, there are a whole host of solutions. And I think the exchange rate is an excellent way by which to control inflation while having effects on employment that can be addressed very effectively through a wide range of other means. So in this video, we have talked about a uh, pretty confusing political compass test question, uh, talked about what topic it's referring to, um, explained what the topic is, factors that influence it, benefits and disadvantages to, you know, high and low exchange rates, my personal analysis of which may be better, 
ways by which to combat the negatives that come with um, the prescribed exchange rate that I suggested. And then finally, how I personally would answer the question, given all the information I have. And greatly, uh, I greatly appreciate you all for watching. And I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye, everybody.